coming up on this edition of ATV News. This isn't the first accident we've had down here. Cops know where a motorcyclist lost his life. They're working on when. Why wouldn't I want to keep being an instructor even after my death? We'll tell you something you can do with your body besides burying it here. We know soccer, and so that's the language that we speak here. They're from all over the world and all together speak seven languages. We'll show you how one team uses these differences to come together. November was extremely dry, but I'll tell you when it's time to break out the snow boots and snow shovels in weather. The A's been blue all weekend. I'll show you what lit it up in sports. All that and more, this is ATV News. We just want people to drive safe and be aware of their surroundings. A motorcycle accident is what police say killed a Wellsville man. Here, crews are working to pull the bike from the ditch they found it in Tuesday morning. Welcome to ATV News. I'm Sarah Murphy. And I'm Leah Crescioni. Police say 52-year-old Darwin J. Bundy died while riding his motorcycle overnight sometime between Monday night and Tuesday morning. Police say a Logan City worker who came to check on road repairs found Bundy's body early yesterday near a curve in the road. Failed to negotiate the curve in the road, as you can see, uh, and ended up deceased as a, as a result of the accident. Police say police found the body south of Logan City landfill near 1900 West and 200 South. Police say Bundy was wearing a helmet. Someone shot people traveling on I-15 Tuesday morning, and police are still looking for who it could be. Utah Public Safety says four vehicles reported being shot a few hours south of Logan in Juab County. Now, as you can see, the area is mainly farmland and sparsely populated. Utah Highway Patrol says the shootings seem random. They say two people from the four vehicles shot at were hit and sustained non-life-threatening injuries. Now for an update on the number of COVID cases in Utah. There have been more than 9,000 since last week with more than 400 hospitalizations. There have been nearly 600,000 total. In the Bear River Health District, which contains Cache, Box and Elder and Rich Counties, there have been more than 500 cases since last week with 90 or 29 new hospitalizations. There have been nearly 40,000 total cases. And although we usually report on cases at Utah State University, the school does, has not updated its numbers since last week. Now let's take a look at the vaccination rates across the state and our health district. 55.6% of all Utahns have been fully vaccinated, up 0.5% from last week. And in our health district, nearly 50% of residents have been fully vaccinated, up 0.4% from last week. Omicron variant case has been found in Northern California today. Omicron is a new COVID-19 variant. Its recent discovery has people talking more about awareness and prevention strategies. Now the new variant was first found in South Africa and was reported to the World Health Organization. The organization says the Omicron variant has 32 mutations compared to the Delta variants nine. Now this means the variant may spread easier. Both have spike proteins that allow the virus to cause infections, but the organization says they're not sure how well the vaccine will protect against Omicron yet. South African public health experts say that 87% of hospitalized patients in South Africa are not vaccinated. Omicron cases have been reported in Europe, Asia, Africa, and North America. The World Health Organization says the global risk is very high. With emerging evidence, of some waning vaccine immunity against infection, it's clear that in future countries will need tailored booster strategies. The World Health Organization recommends to continue to wear masks, social distance, and avoid crowds to limit the spread of the virus. A public body of the Department of Health and Social Care said COVID deaths are affecting how many people are donating their bodies to science. If you are interested in donating your body to science, 
You can do it in three steps. With the University of Utah Body Donor Program, you fill out two copies of the consent form found on their website, inform your family of your wishes, and carry the wallet card in case of accidental death. After researchers are done with the bodies, they are cremated and returned to the families. Researchers say donating your body benefits research. This is made possible by these generous gifts of people donating their family. And it's one of those things that kind of pays forward. These people will then in turn go on and help other people. Anderson says more than 300 USU students use cadavers for educational purposes. Well, where do we go from here? <laughs> well, Christmas is officially here in Logan and Center Street had a special visitor. The American Festival Chorus sang Christmas carols to start off the celebrations while bundle up kids lined Center Street waiting for St. Nick on Saturday. The horses and carriage carried in the Christmas spirit. Children went up to meet Santa and share their wish lists. He gave them a special gift of his own. Santa Claus sang for the crowd and invited everyone to sing along. They cheered to light the Christmas trees and actors from the story A Christmas Carol performed in front of the Keen Lyric Theater. Thanksgiving can be a difficult time for those who might not have the means to enjoy a dinner or a family to share it with. The manager of Cash Coffee, a local coffee shop in South Logan, organized an event to help provide meals for those who may not have food. The manager says this is their third year hosting the free Thanksgiving. First year, I decided to help out one family, and then I decided to help out the whole community. And everybody told me I couldn't do it because it was a lot of money. So I reached out to get help from the community to make sure it happened. And our community is amazing. They help, they've brought all the food today. They've helped do deliveries. They help serve. So everything is done by the community. Says about 500 people showed up their first year and about 300 people came the following two years. The manager and their family hope to continue this Thanksgiving tradition so they can continue to give back to the community. And the holiday season also means finals week for Utah State students, but Emma Fates joins us live from the Taggart Student Center Festival of Trees, where USU is bringing the holiday spirit. That's right, I'm here at the Utah State Festival of Trees, where all of these trees have been decorated by a different USU student organization. And the goal is to just bring a little bit of holiday cheer to finals week. Now, I think of trees like this when I think of the holiday season, but I also think of a lot of food. I wanted to know just how much food we are wasting during the holiday season and some simple ways to reduce that. We spend hours preparing to cut into our juicy holiday turkeys. We savor all our hard work piled on our plates. And then we throw it all away. During the holidays, people, they're cooking more for not just themselves, but you know, for that gathering. Waste goes up by 25% in the US between Thanksgiving and New Year's. That's 1 million extra tons of waste and 210,000 of that is food. Why so much? It's easy transportation to the store for most people. Um, and I really do think that has played into it, is that we've lost the sense of where our food comes from. The water used to produce our food is wasted with it, and garbage pickup gets more expensive as landfills grow. But that doesn't mean you should give up on holiday feasts and let your decorated table sit empty. There are simple solutions. Using what you have already and then buying the rest of it. You know, we're all guilty of, of running to the grocery store and saying, hmm, do I have lettuce or not? I better buy it just in case. If this is the first time you're hosting a party, maybe asking other people who have hosted more parties to see how much food you would need for 10 or 20 people. And if the thought of another turkey sandwich has you feeling sick, why not move your leftovers to the freezer where they will stay fresh until you can look at turkey again. Williamson says it's simple acts like this 
that make all the difference. It really takes all of us being a little bit better. It doesn't take all of us being perfect by any means. Just being conscious of your food waste and making plans for it so that you're reducing that food waste. Now, just like all of these trees will be donated to families in need, USU Extension says you can donate cans or non-perishable items to your local food pantry. Reporting live from the Taggart Student Center, Emma Fates, ATV News. Thanks, Emma. And coming up? They touched me how to control the ball, how to keep the ball the right way. Well, we'll show you what else this team is learning beyond soccer skills. You should stick to basketball, and I gladly uh, agree with that. Basketball may be what Justin Bean is known for. We'll show you how you may start to know him for banking and burritos. And coming up in weather, William Voltez will have this seven-day forecast. The current temperature is 52 degrees. Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. The Surplus Store. Someone's trash is about to be my treasure. We have cords and cables here. We have bags full of towels and sheets. Do you want this fold-up mattress? Because we don't. We got keyboards, paint cans, whatever this is, typewriters, computer monitors. It's destiny on the line. We want you at Surplus. Products are not guaranteed to work. All sales are final. This commercial is not endorsed by Utah State. This was the canyon this week. Still looking like fall out there. A little bit of ice. But these little guys are going to have to be migrating south of the winter soon. Because fall isn't staying around for much longer. But let's take a look at our national radar. So on the east coast here, we're looking at a lot of uh, storm systems moving east. You're going through the Midwest onto the east. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. But if you look on the west coast here, nothing much going on, especially if you look at the state radar, and we'll see that there's not a single drop of precipitation there. As you can see there, yes, nothing at all going on. But like I said, that's going to change for us. Let's take a look at this jet stream radar here. Um, as we can see, it's coming in through the north, through Canada, into the Midwest, and through east. That's why we're seeing some of those storms on the east coast that we saw a little bit ago. And the colors, the hotter the color, the faster the wind speed. So these jet streams are causing our winter patterns. Well, I talked to a climatologist here at USU, John Meyer, and he talked a little bit more about this phenomenon. The jet stream I like to call the shepherd of the storm. The jet stream takes the storm systems and guides them where they go. It's like the lanes of a highway. So, like John was saying, these, st these weather patterns create the storm systems. Um, then, and these next couple of weeks, we're going to be seeing a change here as this jet stream moves south. What we have here is a high pressure ridge. And that's going to break down and move out to the Pacific Ocean, bringing the jet stream down with it. And with that, it's going to bring a lot of more precipitation, a lot more storms. 
And as you can see on the seven day forecast, and we'll see it later in the week, but earlier on, it's still pretty mild, it's been about the same it's been um, for the last month, our super dry November, looking at 51, 52, 51, 48, similar lows as well. And if you look at the end of the week, we're getting a little bit of the sun on Sunday, a um, little bit lower, and then getting into Monday and Tuesday is our chance of precipitation. Now, it's probably going to be uh, rain, as it's not quite cold enough for some snow, but be on the lookout for that. And you are guys all caught up on your weather. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, William. If you're looking to get some fun in the sun before those storms roll in next week, Dalton Renshaw shows us around Logan River, a popular local golf course. Just try to hit a good one. That's all I need. If you're looking for a place to play golf in Cache Valley, there's a couple of options at your fingertips. But one of the most popular and most affordable options is Logan River Golf Course. But you might want to bring a couple extra balls with you when you come. I come to Logan River because it's hard. It's so tough. It's more playable than you think. So I just suggest people come out and try for themselves. And I think you'd find it more playable than it appears. Ag swing. Logan River isn't the only golf course in the valley. Both Birch Creek and the Logan Country Club attract regular visitors. So what is it about Logan River that separates itself from the rest? One of the best reasons why I like Logan River is probably just the vibe. Tons of juniors out all the time. Not a long course, um, so it's super flat, easy to walk. Um, I really like to walk. You get to play a lot of different shots that you don't really get to play at any other course. And it's a great student value for 13 bucks, so it leads me to it every time. As a public golf course, Logan River receives an estimated $150,000 in subsidy from Logan City annually to help maintain the course. This helps to keep the course fees the lowest in the valley, making it a great option for beginners and students. It is crowded, but like, there's no better place to learn how to play golf or play golf. I mean, even the range is great. Um, it's a great beginner course, and the, the management out here is awesome. They're super nice, super accommodating to students, so I would recommend anyone. Honestly, anyone in Cache Valley, it's a great place to play. Dalton Renshaw, ATV News. The golf course does not have a closing date set yet. Logan River says they'll stay open until snow settles on the course. The Athletics United Soccer Club, a team of refugees, is wrapping up their season, but the skills they learned they say are going to help them off the field too. I found out how the club is teaching their players more than just soccer. The cheers, coaching. You're gonna pass to Jose Manuel, and then he's gonna lay it off, and you're gonna run and shoot on goal. And the sacks. Why are you going that way? To pass to my teammate, duh. Like most kids' soccer teams. If you're 10 or younger, you're going over here with Teresa and Suzanne. Their practice is filled with warm ups, games. Game of keep away, let's get in a big circle. And some distractions. Yeah, yeah now I can do cartwheels. Perfect trip. It's a game played all over the world, but for this team, Woo! people from all over the world play it here. And most of the kids we have in our club have very recently immigrated to the U.S. The Athletics United Soccer Club is made up of refugee children. What the, if they touch me, how to control the ball, how to keep the ball the right way. They come from different countries, different cultures, and different religions. The region that most of these kids come from is at war right now, and some of these kids come from opposite sides of that conflict. But here on the pitch, I think for the most part, that gets set to the side, and, and we're teammates. Each practice, they learn how to pass. Nice pass, buddy! Shoot, dribble, and how to juggle languages. In one week, we counted we had seven languages being spoken in practice. Um, and um, I know there's a couple of the boys here had no English when they first started coming to play with us. Um, and uh, they're getting pretty good, actually. But these kids say with every play, they find their own form of communication. Head nods. Yeah, yeah that's basically it. If, if like the soccer ball comes, we're like, I didn't have time to make friends because I didn't speak English. That was the time that I came to America. After that, we moved here, and then I made more friends here. It was the soccer because everybody talks the same time, and then the words just get in your mind, and then you learn them. 
It's the skills and the tricks that players say makes them like to hit the grass and start to play. And on top of that, volunteers say they have one main goal. I hope that after being part of Athletics United, kids have a sense of inspiration. A goal that's already started to make a point for these kids. They say they want everyone to know. They should try their best at everything they love and follow their dreams. Club soccer founders say that they started the club to strengthen the community and they're always looking to form more connections. You can find a link to volunteer opportunities on our Facebook page. Justin Bean is well known on the basketball court. Dalton Renshaw shows you how NIL deals have changed what he does off the court. The student section screaming Justin Bean's name has become a staple of Utah State men's basketball games over the past four years. The senior forward went from walk-on to cult hero and turned his local fame into endorsement opportunities. With the NCAA allowing name, image, and likeness rights to college athletes for the first time, doors have started to open for players like Bean. Taco Time actually reached out to me, the owner, Doug Dixon, through Twitter. So social media, I got a DM from him, and he just said, hey man, just heard about NIL, you know, let's get something going, and so it was quite simple. When NIL deals became a possibility, the Utah State Compliance Office had to quickly act and adapt to make sure that athletes weren't getting themselves into situations that could jeopardize their eligibility with the NCAA. But the athletics department says they aren't against athletes signing deals. We want our student athletes to have opportunities. We think it's great. They, they learn a lot going through the process. Uh, it's good for recruiting, for recruits to see athletes getting NIL deals, uh, and it's exciting, you know, that, that first deal when we kind of saw that Justin had an opportunity, it's, it, it's cool. Bean and Utah State Credit Union also signed an NIL deal, and Tuesday was the first meet and greet at the Utah State branch. Students and fans of all ages came to meet Bean, take pictures, and get autographed basketballs. And for some fans, meeting Justin Bean is an experience they might not get without opportunities like this. It was interesting to meet like the, the team star of any team, just to have a quick chat with, with him, seeing like he's a really simple guy. Dalton Renshaw, ATV News. Bean is one of the first USU athletes to strike an NIL deal with athletes like Brock Miller and Logan Bonner, following by signing to the same agency as Bean. And coming up. Like it kind of calms me down. We'll show you how you, we'll show you how I've turned to Rocky Alternative to Healing Methods. <laughs> We'll show you how the Aggies threw down not once, but twice over the weekend. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Word. I'm the awkward silence. You try to avoid me, then there I am again. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. Like Kelly here is about to demonstrate. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at seizetheawkward.org. After touchdown, the Aggies were relentless against the Lobos on Friday. Welcome to ATV Sports. I'm Faititi Tuile Toth. 
It was an Aggie touchdown fest at the University Stadium in Albuquerque on Friday. After a 27-yard pass from senior Logan Bonner to wide receiver Derek Wright, the Aggies got their first points of the game, starting it off. In the second quarter, Bonner threw a 39-yard pass to wide open receiver Jordan Nathan, who was just hanging out and ran that right into the end zone. Wide open. Minutes later, another Aggie touchdown off a 36-yard pass from Bonner to wide receiver senior Brandon Bowling. A close catch, he cradled it and secured the touchdown, and just like they started the first half, the Aggies ended with another touchdown from a big 76-yard pass from Bonner to Wright. It just dropped right in his hands. Incredible catch, incredible throw. The Utah State defense kept New Mexico off the board for the entire first half. Bonner's passes landed their way into the third quarter with a short 10-yard throw from Bonner to wide receiver Justin McGriff. There he is again. He just barely caught that right off his toes. And after the 35-0 run, the Lobos finally got on the board in the third quarter with a field goal and ended the game with a touchdown, bringing the final score 10-35. to Finishing off at the top of the Mountain Division, the Aggies will fight it out against the West Division leader San Diego State on Friday for the Mountain West Championship in Carson, California. The volleyball season came to an end on Thanksgiving Day after Boise State beat the Aggies 3-1 in the semifinals at the Mountain West Championship. But this 2021 team goes down in Utah State history with the most wins since 2010. And on Saturday, women's basketball beat head coach Kayla Ard's alma mater, Southeastern Louisiana University, on their own home court, 73-71 to in a game-winning three by senior guard Kaylin Rondawa. The team drenched Coach Ard in the locker room and cheered, celebrating their victory over SLU. And while the women were away, men's basketball hosted UT Arlington on Saturday in the Spectrum. Senior forward Justin Bean topped the board with a double-double, scoring 24 points and 10 rebounds. Junior guard Ryland Jones led the team with seven assists, just like this lob to Bean, who put it up for the reverse. And sophomore guard Stephen Ashworth, Ashworth made it rain with five threes for the night, like this downtown shot in the second half. Very nice, snagging this offensive rebound and slamming it down. Then, with this assist from Ashworth, Trevin Dorius had two big dunks for the night. The Aggies led the entire night, ending the game 80 to 61. And the baskets just kept on coming. On Monday night, the Aggies hosted Carroll College with senior forward Brandon Horvath scoring the game high with 20 points. And the Aggie bench showed up to play with 45 of the Aggies points coming from off the bench. Shooting 73% from the free throw line and 57% uh, from the field goal, the Aggies ran away with the victory, 93-63. to 63. The men's team is gearing up to face off against St. Mary's tomorrow night in the Spectrum at 7 p.m. All of those shots, we love to see them. And now you're all caught up on sports. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Faititi. We'll have to keep an eye out on the sports for this upcoming week. And thanks for joining us on this edition of ATV News. You can find this edition and previous editions on our Facebook page. We'll leave you with some extra shots from the Santa Parade from last weekend. Have a great week, Cash Valley.